Hello everyone, and I'm here for another live, and I see my co-host is already here, so let me go see if I can invite her. Hello? Ooh, there we go. Hi, can you hear me? I hear you. Let's see if I can get my... That's fine. It's sometimes, sometimes it takes a moment for people to figure out how to get the camera on on your end. But as you're figuring it out, I'll just one welcome you. I'm glad we get to chat today. And on top of that, um, how I usually run these in case, I don't know if you've ever seen any of them before, is I will let you kind of give your little author spiel about who you are, what you write, you know, tell us about your books. And then I'll do the same just because we both have different followers. And so that kind of allows everybody to know each other. I see you now. Hello. Yay! I was setting up my selfie camera, so sometimes um, your your sounds coming in and out a little bit, so just be aware. We'll get it figured out. Don't worry. You got it. Does that work? Sounds a little better. Yeah, I think I think okay. it's maybe the distance or it getting moved around. <laughs> it might. Be. Okay, well, I'm okay. going to let you start off and tell everybody about you. I'm going to pop out a screen for just a moment to close these blinds so I'm not like blinded on the side, and I'll be right back. Just one second. All right. Now I can actually, I can actually see people. <laughs> it's still a little bit, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so just speak loud, just speak loudly so we can hear you. But yes, introduce yourself and let us know what you write. All right, so I am Heidi Harris and I write a lot. I write way too much so it happens. So I got a little. So this is historical romance and I only wrote it because I thought I'd like to try it and I love it. The first one I got published. Is reality. Try, try to speak maybe a little closer. I don't know why. I cannot hear. It's Just... Echoing really bad. Should it? I don't know. Should we try again? Or yeah, if you want to bounce out and bounce back in, we could try that again. Yeah, I just don't know. I was like, wow, it's very <laughs> it's so. Okay, try to. We'll figure this out. But how's everyone's day going so far? What do you have on your bookshelf today or TBR list? It's always fun things to do. Right now I'm reading, as I'm waiting to see if she'll get linked back on. Um, right now I'm reading American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Fun stuff. Okay, let's see if I can invite her again. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Trial and error half the times, I feel, <laughs> with these live chats, especially with some people who are newer at this process, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But yeah, so I'm reading uh, American Gods. I actually am one of those people who saw the original series before I read the book. I know, that's terrible. But with that said, because the series of... <laughs> is an unfinished series on TV and um, I really want to know how it ends so no spoilers please I am just trying to uh, I don't know where you went but yes no spoilers please but yeah I'm trying to hopefully figure out how it all ends but I really like I like the book so far let's see listening to Hungry as the Sea by Wilbur Smith I don't know anything about that one so, what is that one about? I love books. Meanwhile, my co-host disappeared. Come back in. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, we're having a little technical issues with my co-host today. So hopefully I can get her back on. It's always frustrating when you have issues. But, but yeah, that does happen. Meanwhile, I've been working on, ah, oh, there she is, some new material for my young adult series. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's... I see you again. Hello. I can hear you. Awesome. 
I'll go ahead and turn on my okay. don't disturb because my phone will go off all day. <laughs> <laughs> much better. Yeah, I don't have echo now. So can you hear me? Yes, much better. As long as you're t um, facing the camera, I can hear you. Um, so do you want me to just say something about me or? Yes, start right. from the top. Let's okay. start from the top. You got this. Okay. <laughs> right. So I am... I'm Heidi. I'm a total panster, if you can't tell. I do everything in the 12 o'clock hour, but it comes out really good <laughs> when I finish it. So my first book that I wrote was this one uh, that I actually published. I actually wrote a couple before that, but they needed a lot of TLC, and that's a whole other story. But Let's anyway, this one... Title because it is in reverse, because that's how the camera is, so okay. we can... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this has uh, reality. Uh, this... The Zell Saga. And I have all the links on my profile. So if you click on it, I got a big old link tree. And so you okay. can just see everything there. Um, my website is www.heidiharriswrites.com. It's not too, not too complicated. I got a couple others, a link to it, but that one, it's the name of my TikTok. So it's easy to remember. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I started this one when I was mad at my mother and I apologized to my mom. She already knows this, and she's like, that's a horrible story. And I'm like, but it's the truth. So uh, I started when I was 16 years old. I got out of the car. We had had a fight. I probably lost my hairbrush. It was probably my fault, but <laughs> I I was mad. And I remember slamming that car door, and I'm like, I need to do something productive. And the only thing in my heart that I could think of productive was writing. And I had like, a, I don't know what we had, but we had a free day. And so it was like first or second period. And we went, I always went to the library because I love books. And obviously I got, a, I got a ton, um, but I just love books and I love writing. So I got on the computer, you know, growing up, I, I'm 36. I don't look it. I know that, but I am 36 years old. We did not have a computer in our house when I grew up. And so when I was 16, computers were brand new things. I uh, didn't know what word was, you know, in this, you know, I had no clue what word was. I didn't know. We had web TV. We had like the word processors. I had an electric typewriter my mom had that wow. I used. So <laughs> yeah. I didn't actually type any of that up because I am like, I don't know. So I was, I wrote most of this by hand because of the age it was. And so I remember typing, I chose purple font. And if you're a writer, you know that you should never print in purple fonts. You know that you should never have anything that's like 16 fonts or whatever, but I just wanted to do it for me. So I chose purple for the cover because originally it was purple fonts. And uh, I typed a whopping 14 pages over like six months time. And I came up with this character of Johnny. And I know it's spelled kind of funny and I've changed her spelling like a zillion times, but it's J-A-H because I thought, A-H, you know, I think ah, so I'll actually pronounce it the right way. So I, that was really important to me. I wanted them to be able to pronounce it. So I also put the spelling at the beginning of my books for her on different things. Um, but it's J-A-H-N-I. And that was my final spelling I came up with. And I wanted, I actually had phone books. And if you don't know what a phone book is, because my little nieces <laughs> don't. So I'll explain that for those who actually, re you know, watch this later. I was flipping through my phone book at the school because we had one in the school library and I just kind of closed my eyes and picked it. So we did have a family with the last name Sloan and, and, uh, our thing. And I thought, you know what, why not? Let's do it. And I knew the family, they're great family, they're great people. And they might watch this and I had never told them the story, but if they see it, sorry, Cassie. And, <laughs> um, but anyway, I absolutely love, I thought, you know what, I can work with that. So I put that as his last name and he has a really weird name. And I I decided everybody has a horrible middle name. Absolutely the worst. So I'm like, what is the worst middle name I could think of for this book? And I thought something that smells bad. And I'm like, oh, smeltzer. And that's what I came up with. I don't put a lot of thought into these things. I'm like, I just flow with the idea. And if another one flows up, I just write a new book. That way I'm not stunted. And, you know, a lot of authors, they just get stressed out. They're like, but what if I did this? Well, write a new book, honey. Put a different yeah. character in it. You know, start a whole new series. Somebody might read that and not read your first. So yeah. it's it's still going to be different. <laughs> so that's what I did with him. And I just wanted a really good love story that started off the bat. So I'm, I'm going to give away spoilers. So if you, because uh, otherwise I can't talk about the series at all if I don't give away spoilers. Oh, so. <laughs> 
so Johnny and Sloan are telepathic. When you're from Zell, like I have to use my hands. I know a little bit of sign language, so sometimes they okay, just Okay, I talk out. with my hands a lot, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really bad. But <laughs> I love it. Um, so if I'm getting off on a tangent, just steer me back around. If you're interested, let me know. But <laughs> I love this topic. It's my favorite story. So um, I want... I went ahead and I wanted them to have like this love story that just was going to last forever. And I wanted something perfect. You know, when you're 16, you're like, well, maybe love will be great. And, you know, there's not going to be bad things that happen except for outside of that. So I wanted the relationship, them to have something tight. So I have them being best friends from when they were little. And then yeah. I take Johnny out of that situation. Her dad got kidnapped. Her mom is missing. They don't know what happened to her. Like she just like was taken and they don't know if her ship went out or if uh if she's captured or whatever and later on in a book i have her captured so at the end of i added a bonus epilogue that i had like recently because i never heard about bonus epilogues when i started writing and everybody's like well if you want readers and newsletter people you need to have a bonus epilogue i'm like oh okay how do i do that <laughs> so i've been learning that so i added a bonus epilogue to this book where Miranda is in a cage, she is captured, and she has no way to get out. It's like a little house with a little habitat kind of community, and she's kind of stuck there by herself. And so I just, that's how that book ends in the bonus epilogue that I created like two months ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but anyway, moving on, I guess. So Johnny and Sloan were best friends, and in Zell, that's my planet, that's why it's called the Zell Saga, in Zell, uh, the royals know when another royal gets married or that they decide that's who they're going to marry. And that is my whole essence for the book. So because the planet knows who the royal is and who they're going to marry, they're able to lock their thoughts from that other person. So like I have Jasmine and Willen and Landron and they're married. And when Jasmine, you know, that's probably getting off topic. I probably should start back. But anyway, Jasmine and Willen, they were like high school, you know, they're junior high sweet, sweethearts. And she's been against, you know, marriage and guys and whatever. And Willen comes back with the intent to marry her when she's, you know, like 19, 20 or whatever. And her brother, Merrick, was actually supposed to become the king. Well, she, Merrick declined. Because in this thing, uh, like their dad ends up dying and Merrick takes over the super ser secret service position. And he says, I can't do both jobs. And I actually love my job. So, Jazz, you have to be the queen. And so, like, they're at this big public announcement thing. And uh, Merrick is super tricky. He walks behind her and sends her through the door first because the first in line walks through the door. And she's like, I can't believe you did that. That was horrible. And she, you know, she like, like he's like, honey, he's like, I told you I wasn't going to do both jobs. Do we give it to the kid? And like, they have a, another person in line. She's like, you're, you know, you, you have that sibling rivalry that just kind of goes at it. And so she tries to get him back later at different things. <laughs> and, but anyway, Willen comes back and she's sitting there. He gets hit in the head with a ball and he gets a concussion and then he's kind of delirious and just doing saying stupid stuff. And she tells him he's being stupid, of course. And he's like, will you take care of me when I'm sick? He's like, do you care about, you know, like just, you know, sometimes they get over the top and he's just teasing her a little bit too. And she's like, you need to shut up, Willen. And then all of a sudden, uh, like they have thoughts systems like where they're locked. So since Royals uh, can hear other people's thoughts, all of a sudden he hears on a level he shouldn't be hearing. And mm -hmm. she's like, he's like, I did not mean to do that. She's like, how did that happen? She's like, that was not. <laughs> and so like after that was over, well, the whole premise for saying that story is in this Johnny and Sloan are like five and six. And all of a sudden, Sloane's thoughts disappear from their parents. And mm. she's like, and so when Johnny's like, I'm going to marry him when I grow up, she already made that decision because that that decision is final. It's just kind of like a finality. As long as they're alive, it's final. And her parents said, OK. So they they knew that the Retillions were trying to get them. They knew that all this bad stuff were going on. They knew that the war was kind of rumbling around them. And they say, OK, so they finalized the marriage for them when they're kids 
because that decision was concrete. And I do explain that in a later book. And I always had the thought in here, but I don't think I explained it properly. But I do in in the middle of the whole series, uh, definitely a panster here. Definitely. So <laughs> I learned that word like in the last two months. And it's like somebody. So if you don't know what a panster is, it's somebody who makes things up as they go. And that's kind of what I do. It's really bad. But so Johnny and Sloan, um, they get married and it's final. And I have a cute little story where he proposes as a kid. And he's like, my grandma gave me this ring and said that I should give it to who I love when I'm older. And he's like, I'm older today. And <laughs> so it's like super cute. And her mom is just like, why'd you do this to me? Why? <laughs> and so and they're best friends with his his family. But what happens is uh, I have like a time stream going on. So Zell is functioning at a certain time and some planets go slower. And so they age slower. And some go faster and they age faster. And I know it's not necessarily scientifically right, but it works for the book and I go okay, for it. We will be side by. <laughs> yeah. So her dad gets captured and so do her brother. Her brother and sister get kidnapped. Well, let me, let me, let me pause from you right there. Cause you don't want to give away your entire book or else people won't get it. But let me ask you, do you have other series, right? I've seen other books. Yeah. So briefly touch on those and then we'll, we'll do the whole little round. But yeah, I was like, before you tell the whole story. I I get so excited. It's bad. Uh, Let's see. Which one should I do? You should love your books. Um, yeah, I can definitely talk about that for an hour. So I didn't plan for whatever I was going to say. I just thought I'd wing it. Oh, no, don't and worry. That's all I was going to say. I, we have plenty of questions to cover. <laughs> um, all right. So I'll go ahead. I'm just stacking the books because my selfie lamp, I didn't. It, it was a mess. You saw how bad that was going this morning. All right. So I have this book series. This is the Storyteller series. I... I was having a rough time with my husband and we had separated for a while and he's since passed just because of his choices. But during that time, I wanted a happily ever after. So I started writing Emma's Quest and like I want I'm a Christian and so I'm a Christian author and I write with that kind of stuff going on. I know not everybody is and I get that. Uh, But I wanted something clean and I want something I wanted something that everybody could read that, you know, you like the magic stuff and the witches stuff, but as a Christian, I don't want to embrace that. Um, so I came up with a story in this book where God gives a power to Angeline and Angeline. Uh, also, I don't, I don't think I said this. So this is the storyteller series. All links are in my bio. It's everywhere. And I have, this is volume one and I have, We'll talk about how many books I have later, but this is not the only volume. There's like four volumes and they're probably should be five. Oh my goodness. Are they uh, novella size? If they're, they're, fit- they're, yeah. they're about, uh, they're about 25 to 27 words for the first few. And then, um, some of them, they kind of fluctuate. So we've got some that are about 25,000. 25,000 guys. <laughs> it's somewhere. Some of them are 35,000, but it, I just yeah. go with what the story tells me. Sometimes the story is there and sometimes it just kind of takes longer. Like, um, yeah, I no, have you Destiny. Have to be just by your story. Uh, yeah. Um, my 18th one in that series is called Destiny's Choice. I did something really horrible to myself. I put, uh, 14 main characters in the book and they, nobody should yeah. ever do that. Just so you know, I knew it was a bad choice when I did it, but I wanted to give each couple a, um, a chance. So in my series, I got Angeline. She wakes up and like her brothers went to war. They died. Her dad went to war. He died. It's her and her mom. They're doing fine for a minute. And then her mom gets sick. And, you know, her mom's like hugging her. She's like, I know this is probably like the last day that, you know, we're going to be together. Like, this is it. And she's giving her it's it speech, basically. And, you know, she's like, I pray, you know, a blessing over you where you know, you have food to eat and that you're healthy and that you find a good family. And, you know, she's given her last will and testament here. And uh, Angeline, in her heart, she's like 17 at the time, which is the whole gist of the whole thing. She says, you know, I wish we could wake up tomorrow and that you'd be well and that um, we had food to eat and everything was okay. And her mom said, may God make it so. And so they wake up the next morning, her mother as well. And all the food in the cabinets are full. 
and they go on living happily, you know, for a while. And she meets Doran and they fall in love and they have kids and they have um, Kaylin, they have uh, Zamfira and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I love Romania. Like it just sparks like something in front of me, like the Romanians and the Transylvanians and all that kind of stuff. So when I came up with this idea, I'm like, well, I want him to be a storyteller. What kind of last name could a storyteller have? I want it to all be related to a story. But you can't just use stories last name. And I'm like, I love Romanian. So I found this really cool site where you type in anything and it gives you every single language you got. So <laughs> I um, typed in storyteller and I got Pavestator. So it's, I, I don't want to get it right, but Pavestator. So I shortened it to Pavest because a lot of people just shorten everything. So everybody in like the main last name is Pavest. Now this family starts out with Case and Page. He's got a little bit of a rough backstory because we all do. And plus, I wanted him to be like a golden boy. But he had to be a golden boy because he had hardship before that. You know, because you can't be a golden boy if you don't have a good backstory. So he's got a little bit of a backstory where, you know, it's mess and things. But he's wanting to do better. So he gets a job at a coffee shop. And uh, he decides that, you know, he's going to buy a car because that's what 16 year olds do. They get a car. And so he's saving up for it and he hits 17 and he learns he's a storyteller. So everybody from Angeline is born with storyteller powers that manifest when they're 17. And so they give a, a necklace to everybody. And when they rub the necklace, it helps hone that power. It's not that they have to have it. It's that it just is a little bit more direct. So like as they're building up to 17, sometimes the powers just kind of start working. Because they're telling themselves stories depending on how they work. And sometimes after that, they don't think about it and it takes a while. So it just depends on how each story goes. If you have any questions, let me know. No, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause right there for, and I'm going to do my little introduction for anybody who doesn't know me. Um, my name is Catherine E. Wabell. I'm a fantasy author. Uh, you write epic fantasy, high fantasy genre, and various age brackets. I currently have three series out. My first one I'm going to talk about, I guess I'll do by age. I think that's the easiest way to approach it. I have a young adult portal fantasy series. So kind of that nice merger between big, heavy fantasy, but a little touch underlines of sci-fi in it. It's also qualified as Noble Bright. So the positive side of epic fantasy, um, more along the lines of Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. But this one, the magical multiverse, deals with 12 magical worlds, world jumping, uh, multiple dimensions, a lot of a lot of stuff. It's a huge yeah. cast really of good. mythological creatures, beast beings, and it's just it's it's really fun. Um, for aging it up, I have a new adult series called the Incarn Saga. There are four of them. I'm gonna tilt it there. Um, that was my debut series. I started that one when I was 17, so understand that starting right young series like but it. uh it's a darker yeah. fantasy um shifter fantasy set in a kingdom on the verge of war where both the humans and the shapeshifters have to decide if they can unite uh to defend themselves against a greater threat or not and then my final series is a novella series for adults it is based off norse mythology so you can have vikings you can have yggdrasil the world tree the nine realms and that one is called the guardian speaker right now there are um seven out and the eighth one will i'm getting close to be releasing soon but like i said they're quick reads they're a lot of fun they're also my first series that's being um converted into audiobook so i have two of those in audiobook version right now and the other two series are being converted as well so hopefully i'll reach all the audiobook people sooner than later but that was just my quick little snippet because some of you probably have heard this fifteen thousand times <laughs> and others may have not but um, if you are interested, just give me a shout out on my page and um, likewise for Heidi and, you know, check us out a little further. But let's get back to books and um, just skimming down little comments here, just making sure there is nothing important. Hello, mid 30s group. Yes, I'm also in uh, that kind of category as well. And I see you had actually when you were talking a comment pop up saying, um, I think refer referring to the Zell series that you're talking about, that it's a lovely book series and highly recommended. So that's sweet. <laughs> Dragon. She's fantastic. So if you like dragons, grab her stuff. Amazing. Uh, she read my storyteller series and she actually did the artwork. Just a shout out to her for like this kind of stuff. The first four books of my Zell saga, she did the artwork for those. 
So we were both learning and that was super sweet of her. And then I, in my storyteller series, my uh, second one, Callie's guy, um, she's an artist. So I have a comic book artist in there. And so she really enjoyed that series. So I think that's the one she's talking about. Maybe if not, I think she likes both. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> well, let me ask long. them. That, that brings a good question. So um, some people always are interested, like where authors find um, other people to help support them throughout the writing, including cover designers. So where did you find them? Did they approach you? You approach them. How did you do your process to find cover My designers? My brother met her in college and she came home and she mentioned, I love to do art. And she had like this huge twilight board where she had Edward and Jacob all drawn over it in pencil. And this thing is like, it's huge and it's huge. And she's like, I wish I could redo it so I could touch it up. But the original's still really good. And so she did all that. And I'm like, how well can you draw? I'm like, can you do that digitally? She's like, well, I wanted to go to do animation at Disney. I'm like, talk to me. <laughs> and so she oh, told me that her poor little program died on my fifth book. So that's kind of why I'm oh, like, no. I have my first four. And then I have this big block out here because I'm like, I lost my cover artist. And Aww. my brother and her had a set of twins. And if you watch me at all, I'll talk about them. I adore them. He has four kids and they are fantastic. And they, we had a funeral like a couple weeks ago and they went in and they were so respectful. They were so loving. And, you know, it was my dad's sister that had passed and, you know, they had actually known her and they were hugging my dad. And they're like, Oh, Papa. And so it, it was just really sweet. Uh, so I understood why she got a little bit distracted with having two babies around the house that, that made a little bit, you know, sense to me, <laughs> but you have a set of twins right off the bat. That's, you, you can't really sit down and draw as much. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. And so I took a little of a break and I was teaching preschool at the time, actually. And so a couple years went by and I thought, you know what? I'm, I wrote during nap time a lot because we were allowed. And so I just t started typing in nap time and I made a, a goal of doing 10 pages a week. And so I, I'm not as stringent as some people are on the writing. If I get an idea, it's getting written now because I won't remember it later. And it doesn't matter how bad the idea is now because I can fix it later. But if it's an idea that strikes my heart for whatever reason, I just, it might be five pages. It might be 30. It might be 110, but I will just write whatever that is and I will save it for later. I got a whole book folder that says book starts on it. And I counted up the other day. I've got like 155 book starts, you know, that are not no, finished. And you're them. never going to be bored. <laughs> no, no, no. I told my mom, I said, every time I finish a book, I get three new ideas. And I'm oh, like, this is a good idea for an author. I said, but really, I said, I have right now I have 60, I think seven published. So I have tons because I, I type as fast as I talk. If you, if you can't tell at all, it's it's bad. My mom's like, well, can't you just write a book in a day with the way you're talking? She teases me because I would take a couple of days and I would just like spend 10 hours focusing on this book and just write it. Um, and then other times, you know, I don't I don't always feel like it. But right now I'm in what I call writing season. So I'm either writing or I'm not. There is no in between. It's either all in or all off. And I took uh, about five years off and I taught preschool. I learned sign language. I am a brown belt in karate. And I just, you know, I take about two years and I just focus on something really, really hard. So uh, I, I do my own cover art. That's uh, oh, circling back around. I do my, my own now. So I don't have to worry about paying people. And so um, I'm learning how to get better. So my lovely sister-in-law and brother, they noticed I was doing cover art and they said, here, here's a program for Christmas to help you. So I've recently been, I had so many book ideas. It took me six months to get around to the cover art part because I wasn't ready for that because I just had to get the ideas out. So I actually took pictures of these. They're not best for the cover. I might update them later, but I do love them. And so, but I knew if I just didn't do anything, nothing would happen. And you get to the point where you're looking at the book. Well, it's not perfect, honey. It's never going to be perfect. And Stephen King will tell you that. And so will James Patterson. And I'm like, if there's the greats that are out there that are writing, who knows how many books with billions of followers that say it'll never be perfect. I can go with that too. So I, 
I went ahead and I just started getting things going because how do I learn if I don't get better? And mm-hmm. I think those are pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, but, a, that's an important thing for authors is because you should always challenge yourself to improve in some way. Maybe it's the marketing, maybe it's advertising for you. If you're doing your own cover design that, you know, I'm an artist, um, I'm a painter, but I don't want my style of art on my um, book covers, but you know, you have to always force yourself and encourage yourself to improve and be better. And that's mm-hmm. a nice thing. Plus going on that topic about updating covers. And that is an important thing for, especially for young authors or writers to understand that if you put something out and you decide later on, especially in particular when you are indie um, and self-publishing is because you have that power to go back, update it, because trends change, you know, all that kind of stuff, especially on the visual side of like the covers. And so you can update and change and adjust your covers at a later date. And you don't have to feel like you're stuck with cover version number one 20 years totally. later. So always an important thing. I did I did do that when I was kind of designing my first uh, debut cover. I don't have my up light on today, so it's kind of dark, but it's the blue one in the background. But originally it looked something totally different. And it's what I thought I wanted and put it out there, but it wasn't genre appropriate. And so Mm -hmm. I eventually, after a while doing some research, figuring out why one of the one of the many reasons, because I had no idea how to market myself. One of the many reasons why I wasn't finding um, readers, it was just not genre appropriate and wasn't what people wanted. So they go and find a cover designer and switched it up. And since then... (laughs) It's taken off. It took a while. It took a while because like my first book was published in 2016 and only until this year um, it took and now it's a bestseller in different categories. But it just takes a while to put yourself and Mm -hmm. figure it out and figure the game of being a writer. But when did you first publish? Because you said you started writing when you were 16. For me, it took 10 years from the idea to actually having a book in front of me. But college also fell in that state, too. Yeah, it did. (laughs) I took five years of college and I was actually writing that series Darn It and I did a mission trip to in uh to Arizona to the Indian field and I actually wrote like the first four books during that and I was editing it during that and I was still working on it and I just it takes me a long time so it actually took me 20 years to publish my first book because you know self-doubt gets the way and you know mm-hmm. you have to sometimes you have to have life experiences and you can't have mm-hmm. a book written properly until you have some of those life experiences and I was still experiencing them you know so when I was 16 I didn't have them you know by the time I got to closer to 25 and you know 30 and things like that then yeah so um it took me about 20 years to get my first book published but I had the first three ready to follow because I'm a panther, I had to write enough of the story so that if I needed to change something, it would flow. And so mm-hmm. because I knew that I, w- I wrote like that and that's how I thought, I was waiting till those first four books were ready so that I knew the story was not going to really change later. And so that's another reason. So technically, it did take me 20, book- 20 years to write the first book, but that fourth book is going to look like it took two. You know, and I, I and also I was world building. I don't know if you know anything about world building. These are all new concepts that I've been studying marketing for the past like two years trying to figure out. I was building a whole brand new world. You know, I didn't have anybody that was telepathic. If you read my books, they're in brackets. Nobody uses those. And I know what they're supposed to be. I know what you're supposed to use them for. But I, if I could think telepathically. I'm going to have conversations there. And if you're going back and forth like that so much, those little taluses are not going to cut it. They're just not. And I didn't, as a 16 year old, I made that decision that that was not going to cut it because I wanted, you know, quotations for thoughts. And so I chose brackets, whether it's right or wrong. I I love it. And it's very clear when you're reading it. And I, you know, express in the first couple chapters, Hey, you know, they thought telepathically. You know, so they get the idea. This is what's going on. And just a side note from I have all those, but I re-released. I actually have 14 books in the series. 11 are published. The 12th and 13th aren't finished yet. 
because I'm in the middle of a war and I'm not sure how to write all the war parts. And so because of that, I, I couldn't finish the book until I get the war straight in my head. <laughs> and okay, but I want to. I'm going to pause you for one second because you had a comment pop up towards you and it said, um, "Hi, Stephanie." That you she popped in late and she was asking you to just give you the briefest summary of the types of books you write. So I write give her, like, everything. I write everything and it's all clean and lean towards fantasy. So just a recap. I have my Zell Saga. So I have the journal here uh, and everything's on there. It's 14 book series. You dive in. They're telepathic. They're in planets. They got a Zell. There's a war. There's the bad guys. There's the good guys. There's love. There's you know <laughs> best friends. There's avoiding the parents. There's children like Johnny all and Sloan. The big themes. Everything. This series right here is a storyteller series. They get storyteller powers. They can come true. They can manip manipulate time. Um, Kaysen's whole spiel is he wants to grow up on a beach and be a beach bum, and he makes it happen. And then I have my kids series. I haven't talked about this one at all yet, but this is Trice Trolley. This is for my new brand new um, program. So I was so excited over this. I worked really hard on it, and I think it's age appropriate. My 11-year-old needs to say it's fine. So I don't know if you can see it, but um, uh, he's a 11 year old detective that wants to be a grown up detective. And his little sister keeps on getting him things. And this one, he is uh, exploring the haunted woods. And so uh, he goes in there and I got little magnifying glasses and things like that. Somebody tried to buy this cover and I said, I want to use it. I was <laughs> posting samples and they're like, trying to hire me as a cover artist over this. I'm like, well, God bless you, but I'm still learning. And um, I went ahead and redid the whole series except for two books. And uh, my 12th book is a Christmas book. And somebody is like, did you get the the rights to use that book cover? And I'm looking at here like it did not dawn me what they were saying. And so they thought my character was so good that I stole it. God bless them. So I, I had to go to my clip art studio and I am like, OK, so I took a whole video of it. And of me making it because you can just like they have layers so it's yep. clip studio paints that I use now and I don't know if you're a cover artist or not and I'm still learning a lot obviously still learning but this is really good for me I would have been impressed as an 11 year old I would have picked it up <laughs> um, but uh, you can like it has like 100 layers you can have or whatever and you just unclick them so what I did is I took a fresh took it down to no, nothing clicked and I clicked them all and made a video and I do that on my TikToks. So sometimes you might see them um, and you can see how they're made. And so you just see the outlines and different things like that. So you can see that I did make it and it is my idea and I have him saved. And so for one book, he goes from one side and then he flips sides. So I have that flipping back and forth and I don't know. Uh, um, let's and, see. Um, I have this. Cover designing is something that's totally different to me. Like when I listen to people who know how to do it, I'm like, tell me more. I know Photoshop's popular. I didn't know that one. I've heard of a few other uh, software that people really like, but it's always interesting to me. They have like um, pine tree brushes on this one. So you can like have a pine tree brush and just draw a tree. And I'm like, that's super okay. cool. <laughs> and so for like, these trees, like I just drew trees. There was a tree brush. And so uh, that's what I did there. And then like for this, there's grass brushes. And then this, I just did a whole blank piece of paper and check marks. So I could I have like colored check marks. Great for a map, <laughs> a world map designing. Thank you. They have a map thing where you can like actually pick them up. I need to redo my map for my Zell Saga. So that's that's next on the list. But they do have like the little um, arrows and stuff like that for the the compass rose you can put on there and they have mountains and trees. So everything you would need to do to do a map, like on the front of your covers, uh, you could do with that program. And so they have all that there. Just side note. Oh, and that's a moon brush. So that's it. There's a bat brush, moon brush. That's a hat brush. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I can talk about that for us too. Um, so uh, also I have this one, dream it and do it. So if you feel like, life sucks and you want to actually achieve, achieve your dreams. Cause that's what I wanted to do. Uh, this is what this does. And so I like, I just opened this up randomly one day. I'm like, Oh my goodness. I knew what I was talking about that day. And so <laughs> I will do that. I'm like, yes, yes. And so then I feel guilty. Cause I'm like, I could be doing better. 
<laughs> but I address a whole bunch of stuff here. Like, I feel like God put a dream in your heart. Some people are meant to be nurses. Some are to be rock stars. Some to be writers. And some just to be mommies and daddies. You know, and whatever that dream is, I think you can do it and you can achieve it. And so this walks through what is your dream? That one you had when you were five years old. Mine was to be a writer. And so, I, you know, I'm finally getting there. But um, but mine was to be a writer. And, you know, like my mom's was to be a mom. She wanted to be a mom. And you know, just do whatever your dream is. You can do it. So you can dream it. Actually do it. And um, that's what it's about. It addresses bills, because if you're so stressed with your bills and your bills are up here, then you're not going to be able to achieve your dreams. You're not going to be happy. You're going to be miserable. And so the first thing to do is if you're too stressed out, find out why. It might be because you have friends in your life that you don't need. It might be because your your job is too stressful. It might be because you have a lower paying job and you need something else. You know, there's just it, it could be any of that stuff. And if you um you got to live within your means in order not to be struggling. So you're you know eventually happier. Because if you're sitting there worried about week to week bills. So I spent um, a couple years getting all my bills down because I'm like, this is too high up here. And so I found, you know, I did a lot of studying. I looked a lot on the Internet. I looked at different places and I found something that was cheaper that I could afford that I was happy with. And I'm happy with my house. So I, I think it looks cute and I like it. But uh, it's just you got to take care of the stresses of life. You got to take care of the bills. They're practical. You got people in your life that you have to deal with. You can't just trade your children in. And <laughs> you you got to work with that kind of stuff. So, uh I just I, j I address that there and you know, it's all about trying to achieve your dreams. And then I did a workbook with it. So, Aww, I like that. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of everything. I thought it was super cute. I love that blue. It's one of my favorite colors, so that's why it's there. And I probably should update the cover, too, but it still works for the genre I'm going for there. It's kind of like a self-help book, so it goes with that. And So that gives me I a couple just, um, questions for you, one of which is, um, obviously, um, assuming you are indie, based yeah, on how we've been yeah. talking. Okay. Um, where do pe where can people find your books? Are you through Amazon? Are you in a Grim Spark? So are they going to, where can people find your stuff? if they are just Googling and trying to figure out where, what shop to use? Honestly, if you type up Heidi Harris books, I've worked really hard to be able to come up in the first 10. So you should be able to find me somewhere in the first 10 if you type in Heidi Harris books. If you type in Heidi Harris writes, you should find me. But I'm on Facebook. I'm on, um, you, you can find everything on Facebook. You can find it on TikTok. You can find Instagram. And I have a website, HeidiHarrisWrites.com. But all my books are on Amazon for one reason. It's easy. <laughs> and they make it super easy. Like when I started writing um, reality, it was not as easy because they had something called Create Space. And it was free. I'm like, you know what? I can work with this if it's free. So it was a whole different ballpark. And when I started getting back into it in 2020, they had just changed everything. Okay. And so it was like, ah, you know, I'm like, this is so awesome. And then um, just to recap, like, I, I know that sometimes I have errors in my book. I know that there's different ways to edit and all that. Somebody introduced me to Pro Writing Aid and it was last year. And I'm like, I, did it. I love it. It is so great. And it helps my writing so much. And it gives me the confidence just to move on because you, you should have an editor. I want to tell you straight up, everybody should have an editor. I don't. And what I do because of that is I had to re go through my first few books published with the pro writing aid and fix it all. And um, I found a lot of errors in there, but I hadn't been promoting it. I just wrote them and kind of left them there. And so in 2020, we had the pandemic and my friends, it's actually in this book. So I'll read it because I researched it one day from the dream it and do it. And she posted on there. She's like, um, OK. Uh, let's see what she write. She put a meme on Facebook. That's all she did. And she put on there, put on there something about Shakespeare writing King Lear. She's like, during his pandemic, he wrote the whole play of King Lear. She's like, I expect nothing less than you. And it was just something, it wasn't even to me. It was just to, to Facebook. And I'm like, oh dear Lord, I feel guilty now. And I'm like, cause I had all these books just sitting there collecting digital dust. And I'm like, I got to do something. 
well, I pu- published, let's see, five books in 2020, 36 in 2021. I'm up to 22 published this year, and I have five more on Kindle Vela. So, and I have six on audiobook. Yes, and it's just like all of a sudden, I'm like, I felt guilty, and I just just went off. And I wrote 16, 16 of these that year and they are novel those they are 25,000 words but this volume right here it's 114,000 words well, I wrote this in a minute well that's the that's the uh, thing I guess about novellas is they hadn't been that popular or known but the more I talk to various authors um, I think people are realizing that there are a lot of options of novellas out there and there are readers who are now enjoying that quicker reads Um, Again, I think uh, that concept of you were talking about uh, Kindle Vela, which is something I'm not as familiar with. I don't I'm not on that, but people like Mm -hmm. those little serial kind of reads and are enjoying, you know, that kind of approach to uh, reading material. All right. If you want to talk about Kindle Vela, all my new cover art on my Kindle Vela is great. So I just came up with um, Christmas is coming. So I have Dashing Through and it is a storyteller series. You can read it. You can read these in whatever order you want. They don't have to be read in order. That's how they're written. So I have a Sleeping Beauty one called Nightingale Effect, where she kisses him and he wakes up from a coma. I have uh, this one. He's a foster kid, and she kind of picks him up off the street. And then I have one that uh, he's a DJ and a marine biologist. Uh, his, His dad's a DJ in this one and they just have they clash right off the bat so like allison and cassius they just clash and uh but they're storytellers in order to keep your storyteller ability by the time you're 25 you have to be in the imaginary town of angeline which is based in like the 1600s with no electricity no whatevers and they have to go back there and stay for one year and so they they have goldie Locke that lives next door they have uh jillian and jackington that come uh, that are twins that visit them in one of the books. And I just have a whole bunch of cutesy wootsy things. And then I have like them hopping through finding a bunny. And then I have Erica's error, which I love that one. Cause she, she's checking out this guy on the baseball field and she's like, Hey, you know, she's with her cousin and they're like, I'll take that one. You take that one. And they're just joking. Cause that's what you do when you're a teenage kid. You're like, I'll take him. You can take them. We got this divided. It's good. And so she thinks she falls asleep. Well, she ends up in Angeline with the guy she pointed to. She didn't know she was a storyteller and she thinks it's a dream. So she's just going through the motions. She ends up married because she didn't know what was going on. She thought she was just <laughs> going with the blow. And she's like, why didn't you say something? He's like, my policy is always just say yes, unless it's really <laughs> bad. He's <laughs> like, I just say yes. <laughs> and so he's like, <laughs> it's just a whole you know, that's, I went with Erica's air on that one. I thought it was fun. But they got cutesy wootsy little fairy tale stuff in it. Where was my train okay. thought? Go ahead. Here, okay, wait, here. No, interesting. So I know you're talking about your, we were mentioning a little earlier about trying to always improve ourselves and figure out how to better market each other and, you know, that kind of thing. You are an author who writes very vast, you know, vastly different books. How do you market yourself and how do you, make sure people aren't confused when they're picking up one of your books that they're not thinking it's one of your other books because they're used to you in a certain kind of genre or niche and kind of have that pre pre, uh, expectation already there. So how, how have you figured out how to deal with that? What is your approach if you have? Well, this right here, they're all in blue. Like this book obviously looks like they belong to everything else. My space books all look like they're space. And my Tristrolly books, they're all, they all got this cover going around it. They, you know, they look very different. And then my, um, still deciding how to revamp my time. Tra- I have a tri- time traveling series too. <laughs> so, um, basically I am still learning how to market and I okay, didn't fine. actually have a website until this year. Like I had my original from way back that was a Weebly and then, um, they changed Weebly to Square this past couple months. And then I just learned, uh, I go visit my mother, whatever. I am trying to learn stuff. So we've learned about apple butter this year. We've learned about <laughs> domain names. <laughs> I have a book. Exactly different things again. 
bad. It's horrible. But honestly, if you, I just write me. So if you enjoy me, yeah. you're going to do my books. Uh, but if you're looking for space, you know, the Zell saga, that's got a weird name in it. You know, it's going to be about Zell. Storyteller, you know, something's going to happen with a story. Mm-hmm. You're, you're gonna, you, you know, something's going on there. And so uh, this one I guess, is like. I guess I was kind of curious thing. as well as you ever thought of doing a pen name to kind of separate your genres. Mm-hmm. Some authors do, some don't. I write different age brackets and they vary from very happy fantasy for the most part part um to very dark fantasy for the most part and so you know i decided just personal choice to keep all my epic fantasy grouped together under one name if i branch off to do something a little more sci-fi or romance forward i might develop a pen name later but even still is just learning about marketing it is a trick to kind of market when i'm like well this one's for adults but this one's young adult and this one's kind of in the middle so we're going to categorize it the new adult bracket but um, I'm just curious because for you, or have so, you considered doing a pen name? I did. I did at the very beginning and it just felt wrong. It's like, it, okay. I don't know okay. why. And like, I, I thought I, I'd be fine with it. Like originally when I was thinking about it, I published under Heidi Harris. That's my maiden name. And then when I got married, I told my husband, I'm like, Hey, you know, um, I'm keeping my writing name. And then I was originally just going to be all sci-fi. And then this little bug just starts talking to your ear and whispering to you. They're like, well, what if you did this? And what if you did this? And I just, I thought, well, should I publish under a different name? And then it just, for whatever reason, it didn't feel right. And I don't know why. And there's no, it's a smart thing to do. I will tell everybody there's a smart thing to do. Uh, I did learn about Book Funnel this year. And so I am starting to add bonus chapters to everything. And like you, I have a couple freebies online. They're through Book, book Funnel. So like, uh, let's see. I think it's under something. It's under my um, thing I'm using here. Um, this series right here, I have the second book. This is about a set of twins. I love sets of mm-hmm. twins. They're great. Um, but this is about a set of twins. And uh, he, uh, they set each other up. So the sister is the ringleader. She's younger. And she wants to marry them all off so she can get married. She knows it's going to take. A, she knows it's going to take a little while, so she starts marrying them off, and she gets Josh to help with Jake. So they're identical twins. He shows up to put in an advertisement for you know Mr. Collins to get married. She mistakes it for him. His brother had him sign a fancy little piece of paper, and so she shows up thinking she got walked stood up on her wedding night, kind of a thing, and like. Josh actually, at the end of the book, you find out Josh explains it to her dad before everything's going on. And he's like, hey, I think she'd be great for my brother. And he's like, if your brother is half the man you are, uh, yeah. And he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, my brother's the better one. And so, like, he gives a really good thing. And so at the end of the thing, you get a letter from her dad said, hey, I already knew before you left. And <laughs> it's like this whole thing. But. There was there was a reason I was talking, but anyway, this book right here, the second book, is free online. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's free online. There's a book funnel. There's a lot of multiples in there. I guess that's a theme that goes through it too. Reality has a set of twins. This has a set of twins. This one has twins, triplets. Uh, There's no fours. I might have to do something about that. Uh, But there's an idea. Um, There's a set of septuplets. So there's, I love multiples. Oh. I think it's great. I, I, I love it when you put the sibling together. So I really try to put the sibling relationship because I have a really good one with my brother and we've, you know, hit back and forth here and there. And it's fun to watch siblings uh, argue with each other. So I have a lot of arguments going around. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but no, there's something called book, book funnel. And so when I do the bonus chapter, I put them in their own bonus chapter group. So I'm seeing who's actually reading the whole book, who wants the bonus chapter. And if I want to send out a newsletter, I can send out my newsletter just to my storyteller people. I can send send one out just to my historical romance people. I can send them out just to my tristrolly people. So that's one way that can help with that. That Right now, I'm still finding my audience because marketing was the last thing on my list. I was so busy with writing. I'm like, oh, I I probably should do the these now. And, yeah, no, like I said, my first book, I, it took me a number of years before I realized 
I need to be doing something <laughs> on my end because it's not going to just be found. So yeah, it takes, it does take a while. And kind of like what you mentioned earlier, it was like when 2020 hit and that whole big revamp, that was my thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I kind of slow down. Well, I, I wasn't producing as fast as I would like. And I try to restructure my writing, restructure the marketing study and educate myself on advertising. And that gave me that big boost. So since mm -hmm. then I continue to try to educate myself, but yeah, that I needed that moment to be like, okay, it's time to take this very seriously because not that I didn't want to take it seriously before. It was just, I didn't know what to do. So now I have a better idea. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like you're still learning and you don't know what you need to learn until you're looking for it. That's what I yeah. did. I, I thought in 2020, I'm going to turn this into a part time job because this is my passion. And if I don't invest in me, who's going to? No one. So I started. I'm like, well, part time is 20 hours a week. I need to step this up. And so now, honestly, I probably am working. Uh, I don't really think about how much I'm working because it's fun. And I do it while I'm yeah. watching TV. And I have a regular job. So I do have the regular job still. But um, and I'm still working on building my audience. But uh, there's a point there. Yeah, I'm working about 40 hours a week on writing, probably with writing and marketing and editing and all yeah. that stuff. So I have book funnel helps like separate different things. And I can just send certain things. I have mailer light. So uh, I know there's like it's a free thing and you can sign up for that and I can just send it to certain groups. But right now I am sending things to everybody. I am telling cute little stories about my nieces and nephews in there. And, you know, I'm very involved antsy and all that. And uh, let's see, I, I, I am getting ready. I did talk about buying Christmas tree lights because I had to replace these. <laughs> and I have Christmas is coming up last year. We had horrible time finding lights. But mm -hmm. Kindle Vella, I did want to talk about that. So if you're on Kindle Vella, you're going to see all my new pretty cover art. So I have a dragon in it, and it's just kind of flying overhead. So my newest Vella, I started this past week, and I had already had the story started. And it's called Dashing Through, because there is a, a set, like the Nightingale Effect. I love that story. Um, it's Lainey and Morpheus. And so she kisses him, and he wakes up from a coma. And she finds out she was actually married to him, like, for a while, because they kept on going to Angeline. She told a story that she would see him in her dreams. So every time she went to sleep, she woke up and he was there. And so, like, they had been having a relationship for, like, two and a half years and didn't know anything about it because they'd wake up and forget. Well, she would kiss him from a coma. They go to Angeline. They stay there for a long time because they've, they've already been doing this for two years. And this time they just remember it. And so they have five kids. And I got, you know, like, I was running out of names. That is the work. Nobody talks about this. You know, when you have a 20 book series or whatever, you will start running out of names. <laughs> and so it's horrible. Like, I, I'm still not sold on this name, but I have a character called Tavy and Alinka. And I'm like, but I already used all the other names, so we're going with it. And they're, they got a cute little romance, too. But Dash is the second oldest, and he's the one that his dad has to talk to. He's the one that he has to hold him by the collar. He's the one that bounces on the couch. He's the one that you can't control. And I have uh, my best friend's mom. She 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 reads everything I write, just loves it. And she's, I don't know how she keeps up, because I write pretty fast, but she, she reads everything. And she's like, are you going to write a story about Dash? I said, I started it. <laughs> But I haven't got around to finishing it. Well, I am doing Kindle Vela this month. This is my sixth week doing it. And I learned that if you start on Kindle Vela, you get to stay there. And then after 30 days when the book is done, you can put it on Kindle Unlimited. Okay. And so I'm getting a whole brand new audience. I've gotten a, lo a lot more people that are following me. They're reading things. I'm getting instant feedback. I love it. And it's fantastic. And I have, if you like Kindle Vela at all, the first three chapters are free. So you can see if you actually like my writing. So, you know, I'll, I'll tell it. Sometimes you read people, you just don't like them. And it sounds horrible. But um, everybody likes certain things. And so you have three chapters to see if I'm worth your time. And I think they're good chapters. <laughs> and a lot of other people do, too. But I have QC1, the dashing through. I did my clip art studio. And I didn't like the cover. And I'm like, I got to do something better. It's like a storybook popped open. I'm like, well, why don't I draw that? So I have a storybook that has popped open. 
I have the writing of the book of the rule book for Angeline that starts there. And I like literally copied and pasted it. If you look really close, you can see it. And then I have like a dragon flying overhead and I got the woods and I got these cutesy wootsy little houses all around it. And it's called Dashing Through. It is on my link. So if you click on that, you'll see it there. I have Pumpkin Spice Romance. Oh, love that story. I love the cover art for it. It's fantastic. I got 20 chapters written and um, she her her best friend they're living together and she's like I got called in for a date and my boyfriend wants me to go out and she's like you love me right and they've been friends since kindergarten and she's like why am I friends with you she's like because I gave you my chips every day for a year and she's like it was a really good investment <laughs> and so um I had a friend where we I bought her like a fudge round every year she she um she wanted one and I'm like, she's the sweetest person in the world. I'm like, she deserves one. So I told my mom, just give me extra money each day so I can buy her fudge rounds. <laughs> and, uh, so that was the premise, I think, behind that. And we were, we're still good friends. I was in her wedding and, uh, got a, I got a lot of great friends and, um, very blessed to have them all. And so thank you if you're watching this, cause if it goes on YouTube, you probably will. And shout I'll, out to y'all. I'll be posting it, uh, next week at some point and I'll put all your contact information, especially in your link tree below the count. But since we're hitting the end of the hour, is there anything you would want people to know specific about you, your work going forward? I know we've talked about, you know, where they can find you or how they can find you, but is there any last kind of wrap up idea you would want people to know about you? Kindle Vela, check it out. Cause that's where everything new is coming out from here on out because I get a, I got a wider, wider audience. So I'm dashing through to Christmas book. Pumpkin Spice Romance, oh, it's adorable, and she gets pulled over by a cop, and he ends up being set up with her later on that day, so it's fantastic, by her best friend, who it's his brother that she's dating, so it's great. Um, so, has all the happy little feels of a rom-com. Gotta love it. And let's see what else I got on there. I have The Zell Saga. I reintroduced it as a brand new book, which is what I was saying earlier. It's got a cute cover on it. It's definitely space, and it's definitely tied to the it's more age appropriate and it's more, I got like a bubble. It's great. Um, but let's see. I have Carly's crush on there. That's also a storyteller book. She falls in love with her brother's best friends. And uh, so it has all the sweet things like I'll never get him or whatever. And then she finds out they're like destined to get married. And so anyway, Kindle Vela, check it out. It's fantastic. Check out my link. Have any questions, send me something in TikTok. I will answer if it's book related. If it's not book related, I probably won't answer because some of those things are weird. So God bless. But if it is book related, I will. I'll shoot you something back. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I think. Well, it was nice to be able to catch up with yeah. you today. And like I said, I'll let you fill you in on when this goes up next Absolutely. week. But yeah, it was nice meeting you and talking with you. And I look forward to following your career as you go forward, producing yeah. massive yeah. quantities of books a year. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I enjoy watching you. And I did a, enjoy reading the first book. So I read that. Loved Luwea. She was great. And Aww. I did read a little bit of it, but I didn't finish it. Um, but definitely, definitely worth a read for hers, too. She's a good author. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to everybody who's checking out us today, thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.